Hi Brawlies, Marvin here from TechBeerall.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy B-rolls. And today we're taking a look at something that pukes rainbows and unicorns when it comes to mechanical keyboards. We're going to do an unboxing and review of the Womier K66 from Bangu.com. It is made of acrylic body and has RGB illumination that's brighter than anything else on your desk. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so the packaging of the Womier K66 is everything you could have imagined from any budget mechanical keyboard from China. It is just a plain brown box and that's about it. So let's see what comes in the package. The good thing here is that it is substantially well packaged as you can see with this plastic protection and foam padding all around the keyboard. Aside from the keyboard itself, we have a USB Type-C cable with this rather sticky texture to it that is found on some smartphone cables as well. And lastly, we have a simple user manual right here. And that's about it, we don't have a keycap puller here, but that's okay since most of the time with budget keyboards like this, the keycap puller included is just generic plastic that I don't actually recommend, so we're good here. Now, let's take a quick look around the Womier K66 mechanical keyboard. At first look in touch, it feels different with a weight of around 547 grams, and it's made mostly out of acrylic so build quality is kinda fragile compared to most hard plastic and metal mechanical keyboards out in the market. However, what it provides is this unique design, form factor, and overall different aesthetics that you rarely see on a pre-built keyboard. Most keyboards with this material are usually custom built. In front, it is very well complemented with a white set of keycaps with pretty decent fonts. Now, looking at its front side, we can get a better idea of how it is built with a sandwich type of design with three separate acrylic sheets and visible screws since it is translucent. Flipping it on its side, we can see that the profile of the case is almost flat with just a bit of a height difference between the front and back rubber feet, but I feel like it is not enough for ergonomics, but we'll talk more about that later. It is a floating case design, which means half of the switches are visible and the keycaps profile is OEM. Flipping it all over at the back side, we have a USB Type-C port on the left side with a good amount of space around it for maximum compatibility with different plug sizes. Looking at the bottom, we have four rubber feet and of course the visible screws around the edges. We can also see here a bit of the PCB with this translucent acrylic. So if you take a look around the keyboard, it has these very unique design characteristics with this sandwich type of construction and it should be interesting once this keyboard lights up with its all RGB goodness. Now in terms of the layout, it has this unconventional layout with small FN key, small Windows key, normal control and alt but with shorter shift key. So looking for a set of keycaps for this would be a pain in the butt. The keycaps have some sub-legends on its side for the secondary functions but mostly for toggling different lighting effects and adjustments. But I cannot see here anything about secondary layers like other keys such as insert and print screen and others that are also quite valuable in some certain situations, so there's that. In terms of the fonts, on the other hand, I'd say it is pretty decent with large fonts for the alphas and smaller ones on the modifiers but the sizes are quite inconsistent. Overall, in terms of design, like I said, it is pretty unique. And I like the fact that they used white keycaps on this, which is the only way to go with an acrylic body like this. Now in terms of the keycaps, unfortunately, it is using single ejection ABS keycaps coated with paint and then the fonts are just laser etched to reveal the actual color of the plastic. Which means not only it can get shiny over time, but the legends could also fade away and since it is just one material, it is also quite thin at only around 0.9mm. So yeah, this set of keycaps is nothing to write home about and the keyboard having an unconventional layout also rubs salt into the wound. In terms of the switch, it is using Gutter and Black, the SMD version with this transparent housing. But it is also available in Gutter and Blue, Brown, and Red. As for this Gutter and Black, like most Gutter and switches, it is relatively smooth. But as per my close observation, it is a tad bit scratchier compared to other Gutter and switches that I've used, like Gutter and Yellow for example. This is scratchier especially halfway through the actuation distance but still better than let's say Otemu and even Cherry MX switches. Gutter and Black is also lighter in terms of actuation force with only 50 grams of force required compared to 60 grams for Cherry MX Black and Kale Black. And this is a linear switch by the way for those who are not yet familiar so it doesn't have a tactile bump like a brown switch and it also doesn't have a click like a blue switch. It just presses right into the bottom making it ideal for gaming and for those who like a quiet switch. In terms of wobble, it does have a fair amount of wobble but I don't feel it that much when generally typing on the keyboard. What I feel however is the rather annoying stabilizers. The stabilizers is not the best with some noticeable rattle on the spacebar, especially on the left side and also has some rattle on the modifiers like the shift, enter, and backspace. And this highly affects the typing experience as you'll definitely hear and feel the high pitch rattle sounds whenever you smash those mentioned keys. But nothing that cannot be modified with lubing and band aid mode. 
But for most people, especially those who are not particularly sensitive to this kind of detail, this will do just fine. Here's a quick typing test so that you can have an idea how the gutter and block and the stabilizer sound on this keyboard. Alright guys, moving on, let me plug this keyboard so that we can take a look at more of its functions and of course, the reason why you're watching this. The RGB goodness that should give you plus 100 FPS, plus 200 bragging rights, and over 9000 superpowers when gaming. Okay, so first, of course, we have the function rows up top that you can toggle using FN plus the numbers row. And then we have the FN plus delete and FN plus home to adjust the brightness levels. Aside from that, you can also adjust the volume by pressing FN plus left or right arrow keys. And then for lighting effects, when you press Fn plus spacebar for the first time, it will show up a color palette wherein you can choose any color that you want like orange, blue, pink, and others. So yeah, I think this is a very good feature instead of pressing a key multiple times just to find a specific single color that you want. And then pressing the spacebar again will get it back to the normal lighting effect. Speaking of lighting effects, this keyboard has a whopping 18 different lighting modes that you can toggle by pressing Fn plus right control. As usual, let's breeze through all of them here. As for the side glow, you can change its lighting effects by pressing Fn plus left control. Aside from that, you can also press Fn plus up for page up and Fn plus down for page down. However, I cannot seem to find how you can toggle other keys from the nav cluster such as insert, and print screen, and pause break and I think that could pose a problem for some users. Personally, print screen is quite essential for my day-to-day -day tasks so this is a bummer. With that being said, there is no denying that the lighting effects and RGB goodness on this keyboard looks really good. Though I would have preferred if the sides are a little bit more frosted or diffused so that you won't see the individual LEDs. But looking straight from above, it really looks nice. And when all the lights are turned off inside this room, this is where we can see how bright this keyboard really is as you can see here. This keyboard by the way uses SMD LEDs or surface mounted LEDs that can produce up to 16.8 million colors which means the transition between colors is smooth as you can see here making it a true RGB mechanical keyboard. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this keyboard guys. Is this amount of RGB enough for you to consider this keyboard? Or are you the one who hates RGB when it comes to peripherals and overall desk setup? I would love to hear your thoughts about this topic. Alright guys, moving on, let's take a closer look at some parts of this keyboard that I think is also important to talk about. Now, a lot of people are confused if this keyboard is as swappable or not. I've read some Reddit posts about it so I figured why not open mine and see what's up and as per checking, Mine which came from Bangu.com is not hot swappable and I also spoke with the person that actually made this keyboard and he told me that there are actually two versions of this, one is hot swappable and the other one is not like what we have here. So yeah, depending on where you get this, it is good to check the details so that you know what to expect. As for the constructions, the PCB is sandwiched between two acrylic sheets with another acrylic lining around the PCB as a spacer. Another thing that I found interesting here is that some of the screws are longer than the others so there are bumps on the surface of the keyboard. 
It's not a big deal since it is not obvious unless you specifically fill it with your hands. Moving on to my actual experience with this keyboard, as for the typing experience, the first thing that I immediately noticed that has a significant effect on the way I type is the lack of height adjustment. I personally prefer having my keyboard angled as I find it more comfortable alongside the palm rest, especially for typing long documents such as scripts and articles. How about you guys? I'm curious. Do you like angled keyboard or flat? Aside from that, in terms of the Gatorn block switches, I find it decent enough for my liking as it is not as heavy as other block switches that I've tried, which I personally prefer. Black switches in general are very popular because it is linear, quiet, and heavy allowing fewer mistakes while typing and in some situations for gaming as well. But if you are used to heavy black switches, you may find the Gatorn block unfamiliar. Another thing that affects the typing experience is the sound a keyboard produces and the feel it provides and with the black switches on this keyboard, it is relatively quiet. However, the stabilizers are quite ratty and loud. Overall, in terms of the typing experience, aside from the lack of height adjustment and the ratty stabilizers, it is pretty decent. As for gaming, like I said, Black Switches is a very good option as it provides decent resistance in terms of fluctuation force required but doesn't introduce other types of hindrance such as a tactile bump or a click, allowing you to easily press and bottom out the keys while gaming. And since it is linear, it is also quiet and ideal for streamers or gamers who like playing games after hours when everyone is already sleeping. As for my own experience with Gutter and Black, it is pretty decent, not as tiring compared to other Black Switches. I just hope that it has an adjustable stand so that it is more comfortable for hours of gaming sessions. Alright guys, before we finish this video, one last thing. Of course, we have to test the NKRO feature, a feature that allows you to press multiple keys at the same time without conflicts. As per testing and as you can see here, I can press as many keys as I want at the same time and it is all being registered and it works in any given zones around the keyboard. Unfortunately, this keyboard doesn't have any software, so we're stuck on what it can offer as it is. And I feel like that is a downside especially that we don't have some of the important keys like I mentioned earlier such as the print screen, insert, end key, and the pause break. So to conclude, the Womir K66 is certainly an eye candy and a very interesting and unique keyboard especially for a pre-built one that is available online. This type of acrylic keyboard is usually created via custom builds and having an option to get one off the shelves is really cool. However, it is not perfect as I pointed out in this review. The lack of height adjustment is not ideal but I spoke with the brand and they mentioned that they are currently working on an improved version of this with an adjustable stand which is a good sign. Another downside is the lack of some important nav cluster keys, not to mention the lack of software. But aside from that, in terms of aesthetics and switch choice and the cool RGB lighting, the Womir K66 is still worth considering especially for those people who are looking for the most RGB filled mechanical keyboard out in the market. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article link below. Huge thanks as always to Bango.com for sending this in. You can get this from their official website link below as well. I'm not sure if it still works but you can also use my code below to get an extra discount. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like this and see you next time. Have a great day guys.